We're also going to use this for muscle strengthening. And the, the big advantage of incorporating muscle stim into your strengthening um, um, protocols is low constraints on joints. I'm sure many of you work with patients who have arthritic joints. OA knee, for example. We know the best thing for OA knee is strengthening exercises. But in order to do that, quite frankly, guys, it can be painful. And we have to question how compliant our patients are to those home exercise programs. Whereas using muscle stim, we can really work the muscles hard without putting any constraints on those painful joints. And we can take that same thing into ACL um, reconstructions um, where 50% of those um, have concomitant damage within the, within the knee except, and, and we're still expected to do closed chain exercises. And that's what makes it quite challenging for us. So, by changing the frequency, we can actually also influence different fibre types. We can target type 1 endurance fibres, we can target type 2, um, type 2A and type 2B, simply by changing the, 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 the frequency. So if we're in dealing with an endurance athlete or we're dealing with a strength and power athlete, we can, we can do that. We're looking at stability muscles which have a high proportion of type 1 fibres. We can, we can um, find programmes to, to help us with, with that. Um, now, in order to do that, we need to pass an impulse through the muscle. The impulse requires placements of electrodes. The most effective place to put your electrodes is over the motor point. And the motor point is where the motor nerve pierces the fascia into the muscle. Now, the anatomy books tell us this normally occurs at the junction of the superior third to distal two thirds of a muscle. But if we look at Gobo's work, G-O-B-O, -O, um, he, he looked at them in the lower limb and found actually, guys, they occur anywhere because mums don't read anatomy books when they're cooking us. Then we have Burringer. Burringer mapped them out in the upper limb. Guess what? They occur anywhere. So, Compex supply you with a motor point pen. This is a small instrument that allows you to locate those, those motor points. And in another video, I'm going to show you how to use that motor point pen to look at things like AMI, autogenic muscle inhibition. I'm sure you've had patients where 99% of them have responded really well to your, your exercise prescription, and it's that one that doesn't and you know they're compliant to the exercise. So what is it? They've probably got AMI. Due to the nerve going into shock, being traumatized during the injury, um, the nerve can get affected by the medication used during, during ventilation. Um, there are all sorts, sorts of things to affect it. I've also picked up three axonot meses around the, around the shoulder using the motor point pen and I, I'll share my experiences with you on the, on the, on the video. Now, is all this thing evidence-based? I'd say I've already mentioned about 15 years ago there was over 3,000 and that literature has gone on and on and on. Um, there are very, very good class one RCTs demonstrating the effectiveness of this. And as evidence-based practitioners, guys, I challenge you, we should all be incorporating muscle stim into our rehabilitation. But the big take home message for me is it should not replace anything you're doing. Your exercise prescription works, but if you use muscle stim in conjunction with your exercise prescription, it will make it more effective. Make it more effective, you'll resolve your patient's problems quicker. I look forward to sharing my experience with you further on other videos, but for now I thank you so much for your time, and should you want any further details, I ask you to contact your local Chattanooga representative. Thank you.